How could she be so cruel to us about that? Hi fellow health seeking humans. I'm pissed and I'm sad. I wanted to tell you what my mom's really good friend of literally almost 50 years, mm -hmm. what she did was so bad that it, it ended their friendship. She basically called and told us that we focus too much on my illness and that is what contributes to how bad this illness is. I don't know how far she was implying that how much we focus on my illness makes me sick. I don't know if it was we should just work more on having a better attitude and stop focusing on it ranging to you focusing on it is making you more sick and it's psychosomatic. I don't know where on that uh, scale she felt but even if it was over here it, it's, it's unacceptable. She literally told my mom to read a novel. Um, my mom's always reading a novel. And she told my mom to see more friends. My mom sees friends. And so for like three years now, she questions my mom on almost every single phone call, like, can Jake walk yet? And the answer is, no, bitch, I can't. <laughs> You dumb bitch! If she watched any of my videos, maybe she would understand that I can walk, I just can't be on my feet for more than 15 minutes in an entire day. And I can't walk for 15 minutes. It just means I can only stand slash walk for 15 minutes because I haven't been able to treat Bartonellosis, which is essentially a small vessel vasculitis that impairs the blood flow to my nerves. And when I do that, you get ischemia reperfusion and that causes extreme pain. It's not that complicated. <laughs> When this phone call was happening, my mom was downstairs and I could overhear it. And I was standing, I was, no, I was not standing. I was sitting at the top of the stairs, eavesdropping and getting progressively more mad and mad until I couldn't handle it anymore. And I took my allotment of my 15 minutes a day to walk downstairs to scream in the phone profanities at her. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets. What really angers me about that is I have put so much effort into learning the science behind my illness, into my channel, into explaining it, and she could just watch and see if she wanted what it's really like. And then on top of that, how could she be so cruel to us about that when she doesn't understand? She really doesn't understand. I have an alarm set for every three hours to take my Benadryl and my Pepsid and Valium. Every time I eat, I get brain fog and fatigue. And then I take my antifungal, which causes a die-off reaction. And then I'll take something like calcium deglucury, which is a supplement that detoxifies the liver. And sometimes I have a detoxification reaction where I feel more tired if I don't keep up on my molybdenum to help process sulfur and or aldehydes, I get nerve burning and nerve pain and bloating. If I don't drink enough water, I get bloated and fatigued and I don't pass gas and if I don't pass gas then I get a really dark mood and drinking the water helps flush out uh, the microbes that we are killing that are very immunogenic, immune stimulating. And so then if I drink a lot of water then I have to really pee a lot. She recently lost a loved one. She was saying to my mom that at the end of this loved one's life, even though this person had a lot of pain, they were still walking around, walking around their neighborhood, having coffee with people. If I could do that, I would. But with all of those things that I just listed, my the management of how I'm feeling literally is sometimes minute to minute. Fuck you. Fuck you for being so cruel to someone who can't leave her house because I need to mi micromanage everything all throughout the day so that I don't feel shittier than I already do. And when I film these videos, my mom and I stop multiple times for me to pee, for me to drink water, some, all, all, in almost all of my videos, I stop to eat at least once. It takes about 40 hours to read the research, synthesize it, write the script, film, edit the videos, upload them to YouTube, promote them, and respond to comments. That's me. That's the way that I walk around and have coffee with people. And so how this relates to my high school reunion is it'll be at a brewery. I paid money and I, I won't be able to eat any of the food. I don't won't be able to have anything to drink. I'll have to 
figure out ahead of time if I can bring my own food because a lot of places that sell food, they don't want you to bring in your outside food. We're just going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to do okay. it. Okay. You can't tell me not to. I'm twice as old as anybody telling me not to. <laughs> and my mom will have to drive me and my mom's going to stay down there in case I have to go after 30 minutes or an hour. I'm going to be in a wheelchair. That's not how you imagine going to your 10 year high school reunion. Actually, it's it's my, it's really the 11th year because of COVID. It isn't. Really? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's not how I envisioned myself going to my high school reunion. And isn't the whole reason of going to your high school reunion is to like show how sick you are? <laughs> not how sick. <laughs> I'm, I'm plenty sick. Isn't it to like brag like, oh look, um, look at my great job. Like look at my uh, great like partner I'm uh, dating or married to. <laughs> That's the whole point of a high school reunion, to stick it to other people, right? <laughs> I'm joking. If you don't get it, I'm joking. But uh, you're as dumb as my mom's friend. <laughs> I think it's incredibly brave that you are going. Because I think a year or two ago, you would not have gone. And you now very badly want to go. I think that's really progress. You can't gossip with your friends about a high school reunion if you don't go. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> makeup. Um. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was water resistant. It, it wasn't ready for a flood. <laughs> I don't want people to feel awkward though and not be able to be like, what have you been up to? Because it's like, many people know what I've been up to because it's on YouTube. Trying not to die, what have you been up to? Well, you've managed that. You've been <sighs> successful. Yeah, and you know what? That's makes me so mad because it's like what she did if she, like you try not to die okay or you try not to have your kid die yes yeah. your only kid not like if you have more than one it makes it okay <laughs> so since I like to stick it to people I'm gonna get better to throw it in her face I begged her to just trust me knowing me for 50 years trust me that I know what we're doing here and what has to be done. So I told her she was breaking our friendship. She was breaking our friendship and she wouldn't stop. So I said, okay, it's broken, goodbye. And me calling her. See you next Tuesday? <laughs> See you next Tuesday. Didn't help her change her position, but I don't I don't know it. why. <laughs> it's very persuasive. <laughs> Hi, Pipey, you know I'm crying. Come here, you love me. I love you. I love you. No, don't lick me. And when the brain fog came in, it was like my body's already been taken away from me and eating and now it's take this is taking my brain too. That was like the kind of like the last thing I had. Just know like when you're watching my videos like I'm I'm going I'm going through it too even if I don't show it. There's just no vacation and I I think about like what have I just had? What if I just had one day of being normal and then I could, I could go back to regaining my health and... What would you do? I would ski. Well, okay, so in this fantasy, can I be in multiple places at once? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> it's your fantasy. <laughs> okay. I eat a fancy breakfast, lunch, and dinner. One of those is sushi. I get to get drunk and party and I get to... Spend good, no strings attached time with my mom and my friends. That's what I would do on my vacation day. And I want to hear what you would do on your vacation day. So please let me know in the comments below. Those are just some of the things I'm doing on my vacation day. I haven't fully flushed it out yet. <laughs> oh, and in this fantasy, I, I don't get a hangover. That is a fantasy. <laughs> Oh, I want to do silks. I want to do silks on my vacation day. In this fantasy, I have like a really smart, sexy, nice, funny partner who's good in the sack. Okay, now we're really, we're really reaching. So yes, let me know in the comments below. You have one day vacation from your illness. It can be whatever fantasy you like. I mean, not, don't tell me like your sexual fantasies. Don't. 
Don't tell me that. And I look forward to reading those comments. Thanks for watching, fellow health-seeking humans. Mwah.